Hello out there YouTube friends. I am Cindy and you are watching Sincerely Cindy Settle. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you a little bit of a book review, some likes and some dislikes of this specific book that I read. So it's been a little while since I've gotten finished with a book. I've been so busy with uh, YouTube and work and Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that good stuff. So Let's dig right in. So the last book that I just finished yesterday is called Where the Blame Lies. It's by Mia Sheridan. It is a romantic suspense. Um, it is part of a duet. However, it can be read as a standalone. I read it as a standalone. There's not really a cliffhanger. I mean, there kind of is, but like you can finish it and be okay with it um, the way it finishes. And the second book is called Where the Truth Lives. So, I gave this book a four star. I really enjoyed it. I like romantic suspense and it's been a while since I've read a good romantic suspense. So, just a quick summary and I'm gonna try not to spoil anything here as usual. A quick summary, we follow Josie and Zach. Z Josie is, um, had been a victim of a traumatic crime. And so we follow her and Zach's uh, relationship, if you will, as Zach is investigating a crime that is very similar to the one that she had experienced. So we do get several different points of views. I'm not several different points of views. We get two different points of views. We do get Zach and we do get Josie. And then we also get Josie um, before, which means before is before the traumatic crime event occurred um, and then during that time that she was experiencing the crime. Again, I don't want to give anything away. However, I do want to say that there are some triggers in this book um, that could potentially be traumatic for uh, people to read or expose themselves to. So, I will indicate here what time frame it's going to be when I'm going to talk about those triggers. So if you feel like you want to know what the triggers are, then you can make sure that you go ahead and watch the rest of this video to see what those triggers are. If you don't want any spoilers at all and you don't want to have any knowledge of what's going on or what those triggers are, then that way you can stop the video before we get to that point. So I will make sure that I put that timestamp here on the video so that you know when I discuss those those triggers. So again, they are following, the book follows an investigation that is considered a copycat of what Josie had experienced. So in the efforts to find this criminal, um, we get to follow Josie's experience from a decade earlier and what she experienced and how that experience is helping the investigation uh, moving forward. So Josie and Zach meet for that very reason. Um, Zach and his partner, Jimmy, go to question Josie and she needs, it turns out that she needs to have some protection um, just in case this copycat is coming after her for whatever reason. And so they end up um, in a, start having some romantic feelings towards each other. So we follow not only the investigation and this criminal and how they're trying to solve this crime, but we also follow their relationship and how they are starting to have feelings for one another and what happens with that uh, relationship given to the circumstances that she is a witness or a victim and he is a detective and the lines that may or may not be crossed given those circumstances. So again, I gave this one a four star. I do feel like it was, um, well, let me just jump right into my likes. So the first thing I liked is I really liked Josie. Now, we, we, we meet Josie when she's about 19 years old in college, making some bad decisions. Who doesn't when they're in college? So anyway, despite the fact that she makes some bad decisions um, kind of throughout the book, I do still, I do like her. She's um, a very strong woman. She has come a long way. She has made somewhat of a life for herself and she is rebuilding every day. Um, she does not let the past define who she is. She is 
fighting for what she believes in and she's fighting for what she knows is right, fully hers. And she's just a very strong uh, survivor, if you will, um, of these crimes and of what she has experienced throughout her life. So I did really like her and I like the character and I like the way that she was written. The other thing that I did like is that this book did really keep me guessing. So um, you kind of have some ideas at the beginning of who you think done it and then that might change a little bit or might not change. And then the story really does have some twists to it that you really kind of have to go back and maybe reread a little bit. Like, wait a minute, what did I miss there? To see how all the pieces fit together um, to, to come to a conclusion as to what actually happened and who actually did it and all of that sort of thing. You do get those answers uh, at the end. You do get those answers. Um, so that's so that's good, but it does keep you guessing. If things are very things are very unclear throughout the book, so that it can keep you guessing, which makes you want to keep reading because you want to find out what the hell's going on. So number three, um, I enjoyed the writing style. Like I mentioned before, we do have some different perspectives. We do see things from Josie's perspective, and we also see things from Zach's perspective. But we also get that um, what they what she what the author refers to as before, so we get to see what Josie actually lived through, and that is kind of considered the before. So we do get some back and forth, but it is very clear; it's not confusing at all who is speaking, if you will, or at what time frame that we're seeing things from. So I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed this book. Some couple things that I did not like, and they're minor, really. There were a couple of sections that were a little bit slow that I kind of felt like we could move it along a little bit. Um, there were, I did not find the romantic portion of this story to be all that believable. I mean, I could see there becoming a connection, this need to protect her and she having this need to be protected, given, again, given the circumstances. However, I just didn't feel like, I wasn't rooting for them. I was more interested in the suspense and the mystery part than I was the romance part. And maybe, maybe that was part of the issue. Maybe there are some of you readers out there who would be more interested in following and liking the romantic piece than what I necessarily was but I was more interested in the mystery and what was going to happen um, with the crime and solving the crime and that sort of thing. So the third thing that I did not care for, and I kind of felt like they were unnecessary, were um, there were a couple of sexy scenes and I don't know, I just kind of felt like they weren't really necessary to, well, they weren't. They weren't really necessary to the plot of the story and Josie was somewhat of an aggressor in those. Uh, and I don't mean that she was aggressive. I mean that she kind of got things moving along. I can't remember, can't think of the word that I'm trying to look for, but she kind of got things moving along in that direction. And I kind of felt like that was a little bit unbelievable given everything that she had been through in her past and that she was suddenly ready and eager and jumping at the opportunity to um, engage in intimacy in the way in which she did. So I kind of felt like those were unnecessary and I didn't really, I didn't really, I mean, it wasn't something that I really hated, but I mean, it, it didn't need to be there. Let's just leave it at that. So again, there were a couple of triggers and I do want to talk about those a little bit. This book starts off very quickly into it's just like boom 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 and it just like you're like oh my god wow really and so there are some rape scenes there are some kidnapping uh, scenes and there are some scenes of torture and some of those are some of those to me were very graphic and made me cringe at times. I didn't stop reading or I didn't skip those parts, but they were kind of cringeworthy. And I just want to make sure that those of you who do have triggers are aware that those topics are in here and they are described. Um, 
in somewhat of, at, at times there are details um, to them as well. So be prepared for that. Again, I did enjoy this book. I will likely read the second one at some point. I'm not gonna read it right now. I've got a couple other books on my TBR that I do wanna read. But I do encourage you to read Where the Blame Lies by Mia Sheridan. If you have not read Mia Sheridan yet, please do so. Archer's Voice is one of my favorite books. Um, I recommend it all the time. Make sure that you read that one, if nothing else. But this is a very good uh, romantic suspense if you like that type of book or if you need a little change in your genre. Throw this one in there. You won't be disappointed. I look forward to hearing what you thought of this book. Um, let me know in the comments. What did you like? What did you dislike about this book? What are you currently reading? What should I read right now? I'm actually going to move on to um, One Day in December. I do like to read some holiday books this time of year, so I am going to read that one next. And please like, comment, please share this with your book groups or your book clubs uh, that you might be a part of. I would love to get some more followers and some more subscribers. I do have a little bit of a goal of uh, 350 by Christmas, so that would be fantastic. That's in about a month's time, so that's about, oh, I don't know, 70 subscribers that I need, so please make sure you like and share, and I will see you guys the next time. I am sincerely Cindy Settle. I am signing out. Mwah.